Thank you, Jesus. Hey, stay standing with me. We're going to pray. And sometimes you just have to posture yourself when we're praying, right? Okay, I want you to take on your most royal stance. Let me remind you. Hold on. Let me remind you who you are. What was that? That was fun noise. That was like kid toy noises. Okay, listen. What? Who are you? King Autumn, right? So how do you have to posture yourself to keep a crown on your head? Right? Okay, so we're going to pray from that place. Okay? All right. Jesus, thank you. <laughs> no, I just meant thank you to you. <laughs> I'm just going to pray. Jesus, right now, we make a way. We, we hold on to your namesake, knowing that that is who we are, that we are yours, we belong. And we make a way right now for breakthrough to happen in this room. For everything that has held us, right now we make a way. As kings, as heiress and heirs and heiresses, we stand firm in what is ours. And we say, move. Make a way. In Jesus' name. Did you feel that? Well, that's fine too. Okay, so today we're going to get started with telling you guys thank you. <laughs> Tell the worship team thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to have Lisa come up and she's going to, to share for a, a few minutes here of some things that have been going on in her life. We've been, we've been telling you things that have been going on in Lisa's life, but why not hear it straight from Lisa, right? Who's excited? Hey, she needs interaction. Okay. Thank you. I mean, just maybe a little, thank you. Speaking of interaction, there is a survey on the back to um, decide how we should go forward because your voice matters. You don't have to do it right now, just to let you know. Okay, so, all right. Huh, it's really, really good to be back. That's what I have to say. Um, so I'm sure most of you know um, what's kind of been going on. Um, and which is that, well, you know, that whole promise in Romans about God using all things for good. I've definitely been walking in that. It's brought a whole new meaning. Um, and also what it looks like to go all in. Um, so we've been talking a lot about around here about God's, Jesus' commandments to heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. Um, yeah, exactly. Woo! Love it. Um, and so recently my mom was, my parents were out here. Um, my mom looked really good as far as health-wise, best I've seen her in a while. Um, and then on their way back to Connecticut, she got out of the car and um, she just collapsed. And uh, basically she had blood clots um, in her lungs. I flew out there and went into the hospital room. She was hooked up to all the um, machines and stuff. And I just felt like I was supposed to do what Jesus commanded us to do, which was to heal the sick. So I prayed over her. I did not, she, she did not get healed. Um, but this is what I'm, find, I'm realizing is that there's always things happening. Like, it's, it's kind of like I gave up the outcome. I held the outcome of it happening up here. I did it because it's what Jesus came in, commanded us to do. But also, I, I really feel like, well, let me just continue on. So anyways, uh, she, she passed away. And then um, the funeral home asked us if we wanted, anyone wanted to see her. And we were all like, no. Um, but then I woke up the next morning and I was like, what am I doing? Like, I went and prayed over her to be healed, but other commandment is to raise the dead. Um, 
So I called up the funeral home and I was like, I changed my mind. I want to see her. And so I made an appointment on Monday to go down and see her. And when I went, I fully stepped into it. Like I didn't just go there. Like I went there with a bag of clothes. I brought shoes, socks, underwear, bra, shirt, pants. I brought everything needed because I went in there fully believing because that, that could happen. That did not happen. Um, but this is the thing that I'm realizing more and more is that there is stuff happening. Faith, there's uh, verses about pulling the unseen into the seen realm. I, I probably butchered that, but basically it's what I feel like is there are things happening. There is things coming to life. There, there's breakthrough happening in the unseen realm. When, when I stepped into that and I did that, I could feel things breaking open. I did not see the manifestation of her getting up, but... I know that stuff happened. And I feel like the more that we step into that, we step into that, I'm going to choose to have, I'm going to have to choose to have faith for this, even though I don't see it. Actually, the more that we believe in the unseen realm, the more we're going to actually see the manifestations of it happening on the earth. The more we're going to actually see people getting up out of their hospital beds. We're going to see the healing. The more that we believe that every time I, every time I pray for someone, something's happening. And so um, that's kind of what, where I feel like I did. So basically I'm up here for a couple of reasons. I felt like God wanted me to do it. That's, and I'm all about obeying because it feels really good to obey. Really, really does. It's like a high. It's great. Um, but so I'm up here because I am a different person than I was before I left. Like there is a different, there is a, a, a new version of me standing before you. So I just wanted to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Lisa. I am faithful. I believe in healing and I'm going to see the manifestations. I already know what's happening. I believe in the unseen realm, but I'm also going to see it manifest manifested on the earth in front of me. So, um, and then I also, this comes to the second, my second part of what I wanted to say is, um, the power of community, the power of our oneness. So I, I was fully going to go down there. I made the decision on Saturday that I was going to go down and pray for my mom to be resurrected. I was already going to do it. I already gave God my yes. That Monday morning before going, um, we had a prayer time and people were, uh, just praying. And what I can tell you is Yes, I was going to go in there and do it regardless, but you know how I just felt so surrounded and so empowered and just felt like wasn't Aaron who had to hold up Moses's hand like that's like I went and did it, but I just felt the, comp the company of all of you guys around me. And so that's just, it's so powerful. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, just really, really amazing. I need to find my verse. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is what I kind of wanted to, I'm going to read this. This is first Corinthians, um, 20. No. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. I had it marked and then I lost it. Oh yes. Yes. Okay. Just as the human body is one, Oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians 12. Anyways, <laughs> just as the human body is one, though it has many parts that together form one body, so too is Christ. For by one spirit, we are all immersed and mingled into one single body. And no matter our status, whether we are Jews or non-Jews, oppressed or free, we are all privileged to drink of the same Holy Spirit. Um, and then it goes on to talk about the human body is not one single part, but rather many parts mingled into one. So if the foot were to say, since I'm not a hand, I'm not a part of the body, it's forgetting that is still a vital part of the body. And if the ear was to say, since I am not an eye, I'm not really a part of the body, it's forgetting that it is still an important part of the body. So basically, I feel like the more that we individually step into who we are and what are called to do, it's, it's mutually beneficial. That's what it's saying. If I 
am an eye and I choose not to be an eye, then that means we're all blind because that's my job as a die. So we basically just need to step in into who we are. Um, but I also just want to say, I mean, I wasn't here for the pastor appreciation um, Sunday, uh, but you know, I'm just really thankful for this leadership here. Um, like, it's really good. Like, so powerful. This whole thing about stepping into the unseen realm and our kingship and our sonship, it is the thing. Like, it's the thing. And so I just want to encourage you all to just realize what we have here. And and we there's a saying, uh, go before you know, right? You say that, someone says that, go before you know. Andy says that, go before you know. Well, I want to add this to it. If you know, you better go. Meaning if God has told you to do something, you better go. Because it's, it's, there's so much reward in doing it. It feels good to obey God. That's not why you do it, but it does. It's, it's in a side effect. It feels so good to say yes to him. So, um, that's basically what I wanted to share, introduce myself, tell you, you know, watch out because I'm excited for what's going to happen. Also, hold me accountable. I have stepped into a new boldness and courage. So when I like kind of shrink back and I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I could do this. Just tell me to stop it because I am assured of things and I need to, you know, step into the things I know. So that's all I have for right now. Um, I'm just real excited about everything that's happening. And I love being his and I love being a part and being in the same body as all of you. So thank you. Awesome. Lisa, thank you. Aren't you? That's awesome. Who's excited? I mean, that's just so exciting. Some of us have, have walked with Lisa for a long time, and I, I've seen boldness ebb and flow in her life. And there's something that feels so released in her, which is funny because she's referred to as Relisa. So um, I don't know. Maybe you all better get around her and just let her influence you because that's what kings do, right? Kings use what they have to pull you up higher. Yes? Yes. We are going to talk about devotion this morning because I think that we need to be reminded about what it means to be his, especially when we land in new spaces of glory. It's really important that we understand what it is that he calls us to do. What does holiness and devotion look like as a baseline? I think that over time, we get we get confused about things, muddled. It gets muddled and muddy. But then when we land in a new space of glory, it's like there's a whole new world surrounding us. Like, seriously, if I was saying I would break out into a song right now and I would sing a whole new world, but you don't want to hear that, so I will spare you. And it's, and it's caught, let it be known, it is copywritten. They'll get us. Disney, I got news for you. Anyway, but that's the idea. It's a whole new world. There's a whole new world surrounding us when we land in a new space of glory. We go from faith to faith and glory to glory, right? So it's not just new glory that we get to dabble in. I know that sounds so witchcrafty, but it's fine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we also have new measures of faith that are offered to us. And that's what Lisa's talking about in pulling from the unseen realm into the seen realm, right? Like our job is to pull the things that are hidden. Remember the scripture. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the glory of kings to search it out. Who loves that scripture? I'm commanding you to love that scripture. <laughs> it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it's your job as royalty, as heirs, to search it out. That's fun. How many of you like treasure hunts? How many of you like to go Easter egg hunting and wish you were still a kid? Exactly. 
Same thing, only this is power we're talking about. How many of you crave power? Okay, there's a display. You sh you're made to crave power, to crave new levels of power. But here's the thing. We can't just step into this new space that's been made available to us without understanding what does holiness and devotion look like here, right? Because it can't look like yesterday because I shed yesterday. It's new. It's new today. So I have to understand what is he holding me to in this new space? What do I look like here? What does it look like for me to steward holiness here? It's not going to look the same. It shouldn't. Because he's given me a new measure. Do you know, like, he gives us his glory. Do you know what that actually means? That's like, that's a piece of his true nature. You have God oozing out of you. That was God. Well, that's what one of those people said. Yes, his power levels are rising. All right, we are going to read um, Psalm 145 to get started because I think it's, it's a good idea for us to continue to remind ourselves first about who he is, right? We forget. We get comfortable because that, and you guys, this is why we move from glory to glory, faith to faith. It's because we start getting comfortable with who he is and we start taking our relationship with him for granted. We don't properly estimate his holiness. We don't properly revere who he is. We come to church and we sit on our butts during worship and don't give him any glory because we're comfortable with who he is. And I want us to be slightly discomfortable. Dis discomforted? Dis uncomfortable. Thank you. Words are hard sometimes, but I love them. We need to become a little bit uncomfortable with who he is and not in a way of like, God needs me to be good so he'll like me. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking learning to, to posture ourselves in reverence to what it is that he has accomplished on our behalf. Yes? You guys know I require participation, so I don't know what you're doing. Yes. Psalm 145, my heart explodes in praise to you. That's very similar to what Vince read this morning, right? We're talking about explosiveness this morning. My heart explodes with praise to you. Let me just ask you to survey your praise this morning. Huh. Were you exploding in praise this morning? Were you exploding? Like seriously, were you like, oh, he's so big that you were like barely holding on? Was that your situation this morning? Because that's what David's talking about. My heart explodes with praise to you. Now and forever, my heart bows in worship to you, my King and my God. Every day, I will lift up my praise to your name with praises that will last throughout eternity. Are your praises lasting? Do your praises linger beyond your doubt? It's a really good question. We need, we need to regard who he is. Are your praises a proper estimate of who he is? Or are you just offering him a little bit? Oh, wow, God. Are you like, oh my gosh! Right? It's what he's worthy of. Everything in us should be exploding because we have revelation of who he is and we are postured in awe and wonder at what he's done. I mean, look around you. 
Even if you just survey the person next to you for a second, you should be postured in awe and wonder going, oh my gosh. His creative measure alone is astounding. And then you take in to account the different personalities that are surrounding you right now, the different giftings that are in the person next to you. Or you can even look at the windows, the stained glass windows, and be like, oh my gosh, this is a creative God. And don't even get me started on the outside. Because right now, the trees are as vibrant as they ever are in a year around here. Gorgeous, varied colors, and they're just so vibrant. And there's even something about the leaves blowing around and falling to the ground. The trees give up everything because they're exploding in praise to who he is. They're like, who cares? I die daily. Right? Because they properly estimate who he is. This could take forever if I don't start reading. Lord, you are great and worthy of the highest praise, for there is no end to the discovery of the greatness that surrounds you. Generation after generation will declare more of your greatness and declare more of your glory. Can we say that about our own offspring? Generation after generation will declare more of your greatness. Parents, we've gone soft. It's actually our job. And I'm talking to those of you that may not have your own biological children. You're still parents in the room. We've gone soft. We've not, Lily came up to me just a little bit ago and she's like, I was, I was just worshiping. And I'm like, yeah, make sure you don't get those hands above your waist. You know? Sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. <laughs> I did though. <laughs> It's important to me that generation after generation declares his greatness. Kids, it's important to me that you value and estimate God properly. That you stand in regard to who he is. Now listen, it, in this space, it would be really easy for us to cross over into a legalistic mindset. I've lived there before. I don't ever want to go back there before because I was mean. And no one liked me. John liked me. He had to. He's bound. It's hard to remove oneness. I, it's fine. I'm being, I'm exaggerating. I was likable. It just, you know, very black and white about things. And I wanted everyone to toe the line and do what was right. At least, of course it was. And, and so, what, but what we're doing there is we're eating from the wrong tree, right? It's the wrong fruit. We're eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when we're asking everyone to live right. So I'm telling you this because I don't want you to slip too far one way. Because when you do, I'm going to tell you right now that the juices from that fruit will tell you that God's a big meanie in the sky. You know? Like that's what those fruits will tell you. That's what they will convict you of, that God's waiting for you to get it right. God never hinged anything throughout all time on you getting it right. Because the Lamb of God was slain at the foundation of the earth before you were ever spoken into existence. You can't get it right. Somebody else got it right for you. You are clothed in his righteousness. Yes? What, what, what the tree of life is convincing you of, the fruit of the tree of life is convincing you of, is your innocence. Do you see the difference? One is convincing you that you have to somehow produce, that you need to strive, that you need to prove yourself. The other tree is convincing and convicting you of your innocence. Yes? So don't cross over that line too far. Let's just... Let's just keep it right here where we stand in the space of awe and wonder, where we're admiring him and all that he's done. Yeah? Okay.
Your magnificent splendor and the miracles of your majesty are my constant meditation. What an invitation. Did you catch that? Your magnificent splendor and the miracles of your majesty are my constant meditation. Wow. That's like permission, right? Your magnificent splendor. Say your magnificent splendor. And the miracles of your majesty are my constant meditation. Yes. These are the things that we get to think on is his splendor and the great things that he has done. It's good for us to do these things. It's good for us to meditate on that. Yes? Your awe-inspiring acts of power have everyone talking. I'm telling people everywhere about, the, about your excellent greatness. Our hearts bubble over as we celebrate the fame of your marvelous beauty, bringing bliss to our hearts. We shout with ecstatic joy over your breakthrough for us. You're kind and tenderhearted to those who don't deserve it and very patient with people who fail you. Your love is like a flooding river overflowing its banks with kindness. God, everyone sees your goodness for your tender love is blended into everything you do. Everything you have made will praise you, fulfilling its purpose. What a declaration. We could just walk around all day going, whatever, everything will praise your goodness. Everything. When things are going our way, our response should just be, whatever, everything will praise his goodness. We don't have to be worried about a thing because everything will praise his goodness. Come on. Because why? That's not good enough. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Tapping into my inner Matt Gonzalez. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Okay. Um, 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 where was I? Yeah, thank you. But I can't seem to find it. <laughs> Got it. They will tell the world of the lavish splendor of your kingdom and preach about your limitless power. You guys, that right there, not that we need proof, but that right there is proof of Holy Spirit's existence today. The only way that we have access to limitless power is through Holy Spirit Without Holy Spirit, there is no limitless power available to us. He is our source. It is our job to tap in to the supernatural. It is our job to be dispensers of his power. It's our job to put him on display in fullness. It's our job. I love what Lisa said that like she woke up one morning and was like, what am I doing? It's my job to put him on display. I'm going to the funeral home and I'm going to declare life over my mom and I'm going to call her up out of or off of whatever she was laying on. Right? It's our job to heal the sick, cast out demons and raise the dead. It's our job. It's in our job description as those who know. Yes? yes? All right. You are the Lord. Wait. They will demonstrate for all to see the miracles of might and reveal the glorious majesty of your kingdom. You are the Lord who reigns over your never-ending kingdom through all the ages of time and eternity. You are faithful to fulfill every promise you've made. You manifest yourself as kindness in all you do. Did you catch that? Turns out he's kind after all. Weak and feeble ones you will sustain. Those bent over with burdens of shame you will lift up. You have captured our attention and the eyes of all look to you. The eyes of who? The eyes of all look to him. He has captured our attention. Say, you have captured my attention. captured our attention and the eyes of all will look to him. 
You give what they hunger for at just the right time. When you open your generous hand, it's full of blessings, satisfying the longings of every living thing. You are fair and righteous in everything you do, and your love is wrapped into all your works. You draw near to those who call out to you, listening closely, especially when their hearts are true. Every one of your godly lover, lovers receive even more than what they ask for. Wow. That's amazing. We receive more than we can actually ask for. For you hear what their hearts really long for, and you bring them your saving strength. God, you watch carefully over all your lovers like a bodyguard, but you will destroy the ungodly. I will praise you, Lord. Let everyone everywhere join me in praising the beautiful Lord of holiness from now through eternity. What I want us to capture here is that when he's laying all of this out, he is regarding his majesty. He's not just telling you to go through the motions of praise, of being holy before him. He's actually giving us description of what our holiness and our praise and our worship is unto. His magnificence. His big greatness. Like we need to learn to proper. Listen, this is what this is what I would like for us to do. This is what I want us to step into practicing. Is making a big deal about who God is. My experience with with church over time has been more about making a big deal of what's going wrong in our lives. You know, like, can we just be honest about this? Yeah, we've got this going on and, and, and I've been party to it. But what I want to invite us into is making much out of him. There's a, a, a um, tribal music has a new album out and it has the song rumors on it. If you have not heard that song, you need to go listen to it because it's just so powerful. She says in there, I'll start making rumors of my own. I've heard this. I've heard that. I've read it. I've seen it. And then she says, I'm stepping into that and I'm going to start making rumors of my own. Can we create some marvelous rumors about who God is? Let's make him famous for who he really is. We've done a disservice to who God really is by talking about him as if he's unkind. Talking about him as if he's waiting for us to get it right. He's a kind God. He's holy, but he's kind. It's only his kindness that causes us to turn in the first place to look into his face. It's not his anger. It's not his wrath. It's his kindness. Let's make him famous. Let's make much of him. I'm not saying to not be honest about the happenings in your life. So don't misunderstand me. We have to bring those things into the light. It's important. They diminish when they're brought into the light. But what I want us to do is hear it, speak to it and pull the unseen realm around the thing. Can we start practicing that? Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians. Um, hi, Chels. We're gonna start in chapter one. Oh, I'm gonna actually read this in the mirror. One verse two, the Lordship of Jesus, the Messiah, endorses the fact that you are the object of God's favor and friendship. Anyone like that? You're the object of God's favor and friendship. I certainly want to be the object of God's favor and his friendship. You? Yes. Well done, God. You are the father of our master, Jesus Christ. You are the father of compassion 
and the God in whom everyone is equally esteemed. There is no contradiction of any proportion that we can possibly face that has what it takes to exasperate us or distance us from God. Our consciousness of his inseparable nearness immediately reinforces us to extend the same tangible closeness to you in your difficult times. And together, we snuggle up in the comfort of his intimate embrace. This bliss and closeness we now participate in was made possible through the enormous consequence of the sufferings of Christ. The overwhelming extent of his sufferings brought about this overwhelming sense of inseparable oneness. What Christ did was to enfold us back into him. Inseparable oneness. The next time you feel cornered, trapped, alone, you need to remind yourself of this. You are snuggled up in inseparable oneness. Our afflictions and testimony of his closeness in the midst of it all is to spark you with courage whenever you might be facing similar contradictions. We all participate in the same salvation and enjoy equal closeness. We are so confident about you, knowing that there is nothing you could possibly face or suffer that can separate you from his nearness. What can separate you? Nothing. Do you believe that? Yes. Nothing. Nothing can separate you. We want you to know that we are not exaggerating the extreme contra contradictions and sufferings we faced in Asia. We were weighed down with enormous persecution beyond any measure of endurance. We really thought that we were going to die. We came to terms within ourselves with the fact that we were on death row. There was no escape except our belief that God could raise us from the dead. Wow, that's incredible. They went all in knowing that they were safe because God has the power to raise them from the dead. That's incredible. In the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, he already delivered us from death's greatest threat. Now he continues to make our victory over death's claim a daily reality. We are confident that he will raise us again. We value your prayers. The more people partner with us in prayer, the greater the gratitude shared in our testimony. Isn't that incredible? We value your prayers. The more people partner with us in prayer, the greater the gratitude shared in our testimony. I love that. The testimony of our conscience is the source of our joy. We are intertwined together in transparent innocence. There's no trace of a hidden agenda for the flesh to glory in. God's grace is our conversation in the world and is amplified in our oneness with you. Grace abounds. There is nothing to be read in between the lines, but only that which you will be able to recognize with immediate resonance. I am convinced that you will see the full intent and conclusion of our testimony from start to finish, and that you will never find any reason to think otherwise. What's he talking about? He knows, this is this, I'll tie it to what Lisa said. He knows, they know, the apostles know that it didn't matter. It didn't matter what came up against them. It didn't matter what the enemy scheme was, the defeated enemy, I might add. It didn't matter. Because he knew that what they were going to do anyway was making way for the rest of the people that were in his care to advance. That's what we need to understand. For, for Lisa and those of us that gathered around her to say, yes, go lay hands on her, right? Let's go heal the sick. It was so, it's so fun because it was like, it was like Bible times coming like, let's just send her off. I only wish we could have paid for your ticket. Huh, what a thought. Anyway, <laughs> and, and we were all pushing behind her. We know we're in oneness, right? We pushed behind her. Now we gave up outcomes, didn't care because we knew that something was advancing anyway. Something had to move. 
She didn't see her mom get up out of the hospital bed, right? But that didn't stop her. I don't know how many of you would have stopped at that point or would have even entered into the hospital room and been like sheepishly like, female mom. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of embarrassed, like I'm not sure how this works. She, she, she went all in. I can only imagine it. Like you, you probably went in like a prairie fire, right? Ready to consume anything that didn't line up with who you knew God to be. And then even in the answer of no, we don't want to see her. We don't want to see the body. It's fine. Just let's go on. She wakes up the next morning with this conviction of the commission to raise the dead. And I just love it. So in this prayer time, we were all on Zoom and we were just praying away and it was so much fun. Playing with power that we don't actually know how it works is kind of fun. It's just kind of fun. And there were things, my favorite, one of my favorite things that was said that morning is, and Kalita had been kind of quiet and she all of a sudden interjects and she goes, ha, why should Africa have all the fun? You know? <laughs> Because that's where missionaries go and they, they see all of the power, miracles, the supernatural take place. That's where they see the demonic cast out. That's where they see the dead raised and people are healed like this. I mean, it's like super simple. And so I love the declaration. And she's just like, why should Africa have all the fun? And we were all in agreement. We're like, yes, why should Africa have all the fun? And then she talked about taking the clothes into the room. And it was Vince actually, he was like, Hey, Lisa, make sure that you take all the clothes that she needs. That was us, not physically there, but pushing in our oneness. We were rightly understanding who he was, his holiness and what he's made available to us. And we just were, we were just audacious enough to say, let's go. Let's do this. Don't care about the outcomes. That's what gets us hung up, is we worship the outcomes and forget about God. We need to worship God and forget about the outcomes. It doesn't matter what we see with our physical eyes. What we're to look at is the faith. What does he say to do? We need to look into the faith that he has available for us in the unseen realm. Lay hold of that. And whether it manifests physically or not in that moment does not matter. Right? All of the fellas that are laid out in Hebrews 11, right? The great fathers of faith. That's what they did. They grabbed hold of the unseen realm. They pulled it into the now and caused it to manifest because they were audacious enough to believe what he said was true. And that's who we need to be. In this space of glory that we have landed in, having a better understanding of what it means to be heirs, of what it means to walk out our kingship, we have to rightly regard what he's saying. We can't play with his words anymore, because now we know, and we're going to be held accountable to it. So we have to... Grab hold of the things in the unseen realm and do our best to agree with them. We will see some things manifest, others we won't. But we have to know without a doubt that something changed because we used faith that is stored up for us in this space of glory. Is this making sense? Are we excited? I'm excited. Okay. Um, is anybody like, Paying attention to where I was, because after all that, I don't remember. Okay, we'll just start in, yeah, I know I was in 1 Corinthians. Actually, let's jump over to verse 19. And we're going to read that in Passion. Because it turns out it's not in the mirror. Oh, wait, yes, it is. Never mind. Anyway, verse 19, 119, Jesus Christ is the son of God, and he is the one whom Timothy, Silas, and I have preached to you. And he has never been both a yes and a no. 
He has always been and always will be for us a resounding yes. For all of God's promises find their yes of fulfillment in him. And as his yes and our amen ascend to God, we bring him glory. That's just a fancier way of saying when we look into the unseen realm and we grab hold of what it is that he has laid out for us, our yes is partner. And there is an amen, so be it. So the next time you're worried about an outcome, you don't need to be. You just need to say, so be it. He already spoke it into existence. Is there anything that his words cannot accomplish? It says in here, his words won't return to him empty. You can be assured something is taking place. Something is taking place. That's what you have to convince yourself of. Partner your yes with his and let there be an amen that ascends to God. So be it. So be it. I want, I want to like just briefly talk about in Psalm 23, 5, it says that God has, he's prepared a table for us before our enemies, right? And, and he, Paul's laying out in there all of the things that were up against them, right? Like they had all of these things that were coming up against them. They, you know, were facing death daily is what he's saying. And, and which they're fine with because they have a so be it in their heart that God is the one who raises the dead. They've seen it done. But in, in this, this portion, God was like reminding me, he's like, don't forget I prepare a table for you before your enemy. And he was showing me actually that the enemy actually sits at the table with us. He sits at the same table, oftentimes whispering right here in our ear. And the thing is, is that what we need to understand is that all he can do is offer lies. And lies are a cover-up of truth. So you can be assured that anything that is coming against you has power underneath it. We just have to learn to rightly see what the lie is covering up, right? Is this making sense? So the, the, the enemy comes and sits at the table that's prepared for you. I want you to understand this. This is goodness. Psalm 23, 5 is speaking of the goodness, of the, um, the, the provision that is laid out before you. He says, I prepared the table already. Everything you need is at hand, right? Because we know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? It's all prepared before us, before the enemy. See, God's so confident in what Jesus did. He's not worried about the defeated enemy. Why are you? Right? Why are we? Why are we worried about the lies that that's all he has access to? The defeated enemy only has access to lies. The only way that these lies can affect you is if you are living tethered to the world systems. It's not where you belong, in case you were wondering. You're royalty. And royal ones don't care what the pauper is saying. Right? He's defeated. Understand what he's coming at you with is covering up a truth about you. About you. That's all he can offer you. And the, the thing is, is that the table's already prepared. So the truth is already there. You just have to know solidly who you are. God gave me that verse, the, the yes, let our yes have rise with his yes and let there be an amen. And we were at a, um, a conference in Topeka, John and I were, and um, I can't even think of the guy's name now, but um, he's very solid in joy. He loves the joy of the Lord. What's his, Lisa, do you know? No, do, who's the guy down in Austin? I can't think of what his name is. Um, Anyway, he, he like, he will, he will lay out like 
uh, here's 10 reasons why you should be joyful today. I mean, it, the guy is crazy. Anyway, so he calls me out in the middle of this conference. He's like, you, could you stand up? And I was like, sure. And um, he's like, I see you walking around with a very large pen in your hand and you are popping balloons of promise over people's heads. And at the time I was, I'll just be honest with you. I was in a very broken state. I was like, that's nice, God. You want me to walk around breaking promise balloons over everyone else's life, but who the heck is going to break the one open over mine? Just being honest. And sometimes we need to be honest with God because I will tell you that just months from that is when it happened. And the thing is, is sometimes you have to partner with the word spoken over your life, the truth spoken over your life in order to fully step into the promise that is over yours. And so I'm telling you this because I know this is a truth about who I am. God has called me to break promise open over other people's lives. Do you want to know what one of the biggest lies that come against me is? You're alone. You're all alone, Angie. And in my self-pity sometimes, I'm like, I'm all alone! But the truth is, I'm not. The truth is, I'm preparing a company of kings. I'm surrounded by royalty. I'm not alone. You know? I'm giving you an example of what this looks like. It is not arrogant and it is not prideful to stand firm in the truth of who you are. It's actually your calling. It's actually part of allowing righteousness to become you. We need boldness, especially now. We need boldness. We need to know who we are and to be able to boldly proclaim, this is who I am. Because those lies will come. And they will bench you. They will have you on the sidelines. And you will not be free. You have to know what the truth is concerning you. So that when those lies, those whispering lies do come, you can be like, well, okay. Thank you for the persecution. Because now I'm going to rise a little higher. Right? I mean, read your Bible. It's in the Beatitudes, Matthew 5. It tells you. It tells you when these things come against you, here's what's available, right? Jesus lays it out. He's like, don't worry about any of the lies. Don't worry about the enemy that is sharing the table with you because I've given you everything, everything. And the truth is, is that we are to walk in dominion on the earth. Everything that the earth is experiencing Everything that humanity is experiencing is because we are allowing it through. It's actually our job to carry the authority for the earth. We have dominion. We just don't act like it. We actually function more under the lies than we do under the truth. Can you guys stand with me? I actually, Lisa, would you come, would you come back up? And I, I know you didn't really go too far into this, but I would like for you to, um, I, I want you to share about the difference between the sideline and being all in. And, and, and here's the thing, like, okay, so can I, can I tell a story? Okay. So. A few months, a few months ago, Lisa was saying like, I just don't feel like I belong at the table. Like there's not a seat for me. Yes. Is this true? And she says to me very emphatically about a week ago, she goes, I belong at the table. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like it's a posture. We have to know we belong. Yes. So tell the people a little bit about that. Can you do it with some fire? Tell the people about belonging. Okay, so, all right, I'm going to do, I'm going to give my little pool analogy because I feel like it's important. Okay, so here's the thing. Has anyone, you know, you go to go swimming in a pool and the water's kind of cold, 
So you like, you know, go down the stairs and you like dip your toe in and then you go a little further and a little further. Have you ever decided I have, oh gosh, this is just too cold. I'm going to get out. I'm just not going to go in. It's too cold. Right? Right? Yeah. So, and then maybe you sit on the side of the pool and you put your legs in, which if you think about it, eventually your legs kind of get used to the water and, you know. So this is what I have to say about that. When you go all in, it's beneficial for you and everyone around you to just jump in the deep end, to just jump in. Because there's that initial shock of jumping in, but then you're in the pool. You're already in the pool. And then guess what? It feels good to be in the pool and you're swimming around. Whereas I'm just in it. It didn't take me 40 minutes to get into the pool or decide I'm not going to get in the pool at all because I'm kind of wimpy and it's cold. When we're trying to step into something that God has called you to do, it's beneficial for you to just jump in, to just jump all in because it's just easier and obedience feels good. And also then you get to go to that next step of glory. Like for instance, for me right now, I feel like I, I've stepped into believing. I mean, I've, I've known I have a healing gift. I've, I know I do, but now I'm stepping further into that because I am believing in the unseen. I'm believing that things are happening whether I see it or not. So I know that I'm going to start seeing it, that I'm going to actually start seeing the manifestations of healing happen because I'm stepping into what he's told me to do. So you guys, just do it. I'm going to quote Nike. I quoted Nike before. Just do it. Just step into the things God is calling you to do because obedience feels good. It feels good. Like just knowing, and I am just, so I have never felt this assured of who God is and who I am because of who God is. And there are still things that are unfolding, but I can assuredly say like, I am at the table. I am at, I have pulled my seat up and I'm sitting at the table because that's where I belong. I belong at the table. I don't belong under the table. I know, I know that I belong at the table and I'm at the table. And so now, therefore, everyone else gets to benefit from my kingship, from me taking my seat. Everyone around me gets to benefit from that. And just like, you know, Angie stepping into her seat, Vince stepping in, like everyone that steps in, you stepping into your seat, everyone stepping into the thing that they're doing, it benefits everyone around you. So, yeah, I mean, guys, it feels good. It feels good. Obeying God feels good. And it's not from a legalistic place. It's just because it just is powerful. I'm excited. So, yeah, um, I, can I just pray real quick? Okay. Lord Jesus, right now, I just thank you for who you are, and I thank you for who we are in you. God, and I just, I pray right now that you will just bring a boldness, a boldness to, to these people. God, that you will awaken their spiritual eyes to see themselves seated at the table. And right now I come against every single lie. And I thank you, God, that we are going to hold things out and we are going to look at the lie to discover the truth. The, the verse about seeking out, um, God will heal. It's God who hides a matter, but the glory of kings to seek it out. So I just thank you, God, that that's what we're doing. And right now, I just pray that faith will rise up, that courage will rise up, and that the supernatural will become natural, because that's what we're supposed to be. We are supernatural beings. We have access to the unseen realm. And so right now, God, I just thank you for those that see who do already see. And I thank you that they are bringing people in to help open their eyes. Let the blind see. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. The only thing I'd add to that is, listen, some of you are doing a semblance of what you're called to do. And everyone knows you're just going through the motions all the way in. Like just make the decision. Go all the way in. I need you to go all the way in. You know? Right? Like, look at each other right now and say, I need you to go all the way in. I need you to go all the way in. Let's just go. All right, Vince. I know, the comfort.
food. All right. So, uh, oh, there it is. I knew you were going to, I knew that's what you two were texting about. I knew it. If you're going to play, you might as well turn it up loud, right? So what time is it? Time to talk about money, right? Let's talk about money. Everybody's favorite topic in church, right? Who likes to talk about money? Oh, a few, a few, right? It takes money to do stuff. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I knew that's what you two were texting about, though. So, yeah, we're, we're ambitious today. So um, there's a reason why. Hey, listen up. There's a reason why people don't like to talk about money. It's because they have a weird relationship with it, right? There's this weird relationship that if I give too much, there won't be enough for later. Listen up. Listen closely. Angie read this out of Psalm 145 today. Where was it? I lost it. Your magnificent splendor and the miracles of your majesty are my constant meditation. Right? We're going to constantly be meditating on his splendor and miracles of his majesty. And that's one of the miracles that we get to partake in. So when you give, what you're doing is what are you believing for as you're giving? Right? What is it you're contending for right now when it comes to finances? Don't shy away from the topic of money. Talk about it. Talk to God about it. Talk to other people about it. Right? There's more than enough. We live out of the kingdom, which means there is abundance. We no longer have to have that orphan mindset that there isn't enough. There's always enough, right? Right? abundance. So Lord, we thank you so much for these people today. We thank you for their gifts and we stand with them and what they're contending for. We thank you for your majestic miracles, for your splendor, Lord. I ask that you would bless everyone here and I ask that you would bless the gifts that they've given. In Jesus' name, amen.